Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Scrap Mechanic video. Today, we are not going to be continuing building the CPU, as I suggested in the last video, but rather today I'd like to show you all something I find really cool. <laughs> This right here is a simple serial demo. It takes these five inputs on the left, and when the button is pressed, it will put them on these XOR gates here. Now, it does that by putting it through this line here, because it will feed them all one by one. So, to demonstrate, if I put, say, that number there, and press the button, there they are. Now, this design was originally built by a person on the Scrap Mechanic subreddit, but I can't find the post. So if I figure that out, that'll be on screen here. Uh, hopefully there wasn't nothing on there, but you know, this is very simple. And it has a few interesting things. So you can have this for any amount of inputs, which what I'm gonna show you in a minute proves that I do have it that way. But you need to have some delay from after you tell it to go, which is a one tick pulse from a button, right? And then that will tell it to go through these, all the inputs, and then feed in over here. And then after that delay, it'll tell it to write it to the output. Now that output is always two ticks more than your amount of inputs. It's important. Or else it won't work. And your data will be out of sync. This causes some big issues if you don't do it that way. You may be wondering, what are some practical examples of this in use? Well, I have the very thing. So, this CPU here is relatively the same one I've been trying to build in the series. And you may recognize some parts, even just, you know, having a glance at it. But one important thing that I haven't talked about in the video the video series much is the expansion cards. Now, if you want to plug in a screen or a keyboard or do basically anything that you don't have built into the CPU itself, you're going to need to expand the capabilities. And that is done through this line of connections here. Now, I don't know if you counted that. That was over like 80 connections just to get it plugged into the CPU for one. Now, yes, I do have a, a, a splitter or a switch of sorts here. It gives me three ports. I have one for five as well. But the question still stands. How am I going to plug in 80 plus connections without wasting time? Well, plugged in right here. You see, here's another one of those expansion ports. It's plugged into that because it comes off the switch. This right here is a serial card. Now it takes the same the same demo concept and it takes all ingoing and outgoing communications with the expansion card and funnels them over five pins here. Now I don't know about you but five is a lot less than 64. Now the reason I say 64 not 80 is because the rest of those are taken over by these four which were only a recent addition because that's a new feature. Now, you may think five's an odd number. That's because, you know, you got two for the going to the card, two for the from, but I have one more just for added communication. I'll explain that in the expansion card video, which will be coming eventually. So, I figure, why not show it off in action? So I'm gonna tell that expansion card here, whatever that is, right? So you see, it's very fast. And while it is fast, you know, it's it's not instant. So I'm going to hook up an additional button here so I can be over here and show off what it does. And that's what it looks like. This pin will flash telling it that hey data is on the way and then this pin will have the data so when this pin this pin will go to a timer and it will wait the amount of time of the data length and then it will let all that data be 
put into the output. So, let me get out the handy dandy serial receiver card, which uh, I have a few of them. But this is uh, this is that, and you see it takes the same same five pins as over here. Four pins are a different thing, and it outputs it to the same. 64 pin long connection so plug that in this is the whole this is the whole point of it you know is to make it make lives a whole lot easier very simply well I say simply yeah like that all you gotta do is plug in one two three four five and boom there you go. Now, when we press the button, we should see whatever number this is, in the blue and white, be on the green here for the output, because that's telling the expansion card what to do. And, see the data file in, and boom. There it is. It's also here on the output. So I think this is very cool, because it allows A, for it to be hooked up a lot easier and B it's just really cool to see all the data file in like that now let's say this expansion card plugged into it had was say storage and it wanted to give data back well it feed it back on these pins here and then it would it file it into a, a one at a time thing here but it also combines this over here which is for system interrupts again this will all be explained in the expansion card video and then that just feeds up these pins here, up the cable, and then it gets decompressed into these and then goes into the CPU. Now if that isn't cool, I don't know what is. But you may look at that and say, well that's not really being used in the video, now is it? So, if you don't believe me, I use this a lot. So, but when I first made it, I was like, hey, I need to have a demo for this. So, here it is. What this does, uh, yes, this is a slightly older CPU revision, uh, but this code here is communicating, yes, yeah, the same ex serial card, w over this comically long cable, uncompressing and talking to, yeah, this is an adapter from older to newer CPU expansion type. Yeah, it's communicating with this little, I call it a thumb drive, but really all it does is store one 8-bit number on a lift using, you know, cardboard and stuff. First revision of a hard drive. It was pretty cool. Um, but I have a newer one that I'll be showing off in the upcoming storage video. So, if we turn this on, it does a whole bunch of things. Like, number one, seen the data go across there first thing it does is it wipes the uh, the card here and the data comes in I'm putting zero on it now this will go all the way up to 255 and then it'll stop which is what the code does over there but this is a really great one to see yeah you see it just wrote one here right it's a great one to see the data going in and out like that and it's it's really satisfying I think to see it over the cable Right. So, here I can explain what that fifth pin is here, right? After it tells the expansion card to do something, it's got to know when it's done so it can continue on, right? So that's with this pin, which goes to that pin, and then that one, and to that one. This pin goes to this fifth pin here. That's what it's for. And you'll see after it sends a command on those red pins here, it'll send an output on the green one. Just, uh, yep, see? There we go. And that is called the done pin. I know. It's great. But, you know, that could be optional in the future. But, again, this will be discussed in the expansion card video. But, another thing to talk about is, you know, you may think, doesn't this cable here add delay? One tick per port here? Well, the answer is, yes, it does. But because the data is in sync with the pin telling it to go, although it takes extra time, 
it doesn't break it and it still works well now you may be wondering just how this thing works well the first question to answer is what's so special about these XOR gates well those XOR gates aren't just any XOR gates but are called self-wired XOR gates which means that in the code they actually even though you can't see it they have a wire from itself to itself now what this allows it to become is what's known as a toggle flip-flop which means whenever you put a one tick pulse in keeps it and then you gotta put that same pulse in to get it out now these are the ones you see here here they are now this demo actually you know you send it over right but if you want to send in say a different piece of data it doesn't automatically overwrite everything so in order to wipe it you need to have some self resetting circuitry here I have the same expansion card serial converter as previously now this little section here you may think hey that looks kind of similar to this but then there's a stack of two here this is the self resetting circuitry I was talking about earlier now when that second pin that tells it that the data is on its way you know that goes to the timer here right but it also has another connection to this one here which allows all these self resetters to go now how these work is it takes if it's on it'll allow it to go back through to itself to turn itself on before the data is allowed to be written to these so that you know it's the actual data you want. So now I'm actually going to build that little demo piece that I showed earlier. So, what we first want to get is switches. I'm going to use the same five as previously. Next, we're going to have the same amount of AND gates switches. And these are going to be turned on to allow the, the switch configuration through so that it can be sent over the serial. Next, we're going to need a line of logic gates. And these are going to be OR. Now the reason they are OR is because it's being put into a quick succession one by one like this. This is the actual data here. Now, Next thing you want to add is you want to add a one tick pulse generator here and your button. I have that up front. Yeah, and then you want that to be hooked up to the pins, not pins, to the logic gates that allow that through. So you see, now on that last gate here, all that data goes through perfectly. Next thing. Is we're going to need to have that same data from the output go back to another set of five. Then we're going to need a timer, which will wait the five plus two ticks to allow that data through. Basically, the opposite of these middle end here. Now, so that's going to connect to those saying that the data is here and then it's time to download it. This might actually need to be six ticks instead of yeah, you see for a brief second there. Well depending on configuration it could be plus one or plus two the amount of information. But you know that's not important. Next thing I'm gonna need is self wired XOR gate. I just happen to have saved. Now it's a self wired XOR gate. And then, since I can't just build those, I'll uh, weld it on. And then, you wire it in. And then you rinse and repeat five times.
now that we have that done, here goes the demo. And boom, there it is. Now because I didn't design the self-resetting circuitry, actually, you know, I figure I'll do that now. So what you're going to do is you want to take an output from these resulting gates here, the XORs, and then you want to have when that second pin, which is just this gate here, that'll allow that result, but you know, you can't hook it right back into it, so you gotta have second logic gate, and then you form a little triangle going back to it. So now, you get fresh data every time you send it over. And boom! I hope you enjoyed learning about serial technologies and scrap mechanics. Now, to see more, including the upcoming storage video and the continuation of the CPU building series, stay tuned to the channel. Thanks for watching.